What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Work Knife Balance. I have a fun video today. We got four knives in front of us. All four knives are gonna be a D2 steel and a G10 handle. So we're gonna go through all four of these knives and see which one is the best. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and get some budget knives and do kind of a budget battle with these. Before we get started though, I just want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone who has already liked and subscribed to our channel. If you haven't, um, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below or in the corner over here, you can hit our little logo and that'll subscribe to our channel where you can like and comment on all the video and content that we put out. We're going to continue to make stuff where we'd love to have you involved in our channel with that. But let's go ahead and get these unboxed. I've already opened them some uh, so we can kind of look at them a little bit, but let's go ahead and get these out of here. First off is going to be this Flissa knife, uh, Flissa, Flissa. This one is, uh, I believe, was was twenty one dollars on Amazon. All these are going to be Amazon knives, um, too. So all these, the, the criteria for this video was a D two steel, a G ten handle, and Amazon under twenty five dollars. So this first one was Amazon under $25, D2 steel, and G10 handle. Um, some of them, I believe, are going to be, most of them are, are going to be either frame or uh, liner lock. This one has that bar lock. Um, so yeah, so this first one right here, um, there we go. We got the D2 steel. You can see it right there. And then the handle um, coming through. First thing off the bat, it looks cool, um, but it feels cheap. It is incredibly hard to get that out there um, you really have to either find a way to get in there and really flick it or um, just kind of slow roll around this one is sitting on washers so when we took this apart you can see this one was sitting on just washers and it was not oiled um, I don't know if you can hear it over the video but the you can hear that tink on the back there that's when it whips around and hits right together there. There's really nothing to stop that. And it's not really horrible, um, but it is annoying as heck to have. The G10 is contoured on the edges here, which is really nice. And you do have some, some decent grip. There's really no like major hot spots to it. But with the way that they did their handling and you have like these stair steps coming down, uh, not my favorite budget knife from Amazon. There's not much else you can do to it. It is just a D2 budget knife from Amazon. Looks kind of cool. Probably catch a couple people's eyes. It will definitely cut things. You have a really good blade here to it, but it's um, there, there are some others over here that we're gonna look at that I think are gonna be a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and set that up here. Um, as we go through this, because these are budget knives, we're not gonna dive too much into each one individually. Uh, but we will kind of compare and look at how they feel um, coming across. This next one is going to be a Firebird knife. Uh, so I don't remember what, the, what this one was called. Let's see if it says on the inside here. Probably not. This one came with a, a little bag, which was kind of cool. Um, but other than that, it was just the knife and the bag. And this was the... Gonzo Firebird. The Gonzo Firebird. That's what this one was. That's what the FB is right there. So the Gonzo Firebird. That's this one right here. This one you only have a rear flip. Um, and it's kind of a unique rear flip. It has a hole through it. So I don't know if they're telling you you can hang this knife. Or if they want to make it like a necklace knife, I guess. I don't know. Um, does have a wire clip, which is nice. Deep pocket carry. Oh, that was the other thing you can see on this one. Not ambidextrous. This one over here. You only have the one side with the deep pocket carry there. And so that's pretty much all that one's going to be. Uh, wire clip, deep pocket carry. It is ambidextrous. And they even have a little spacer on the other side that sticks in there. So you don't have to worry about that, which is kind of cool. G10 handle with the uh, back spacer in here. The... Uh, clip does have a little mushroom that kind of sticks up there. It's not a recessed screw, 
but for 25 bucks, I believe this one was, not bad at all. I did really like the blade shape on this one as well. You have a really nice swedge up at the top here, a really good belly, um, and it is D2 steel. As we know, that's one of the criterias for this knife, and so it gives a really good polish to this. You've got a nice finish on that, um, and this one slides really nice. This one was on ball bearings, so this one comes out a lot easier and it feels a lot better in your hand. You have a better profile, in my opinion, to the knife in how it feels, but for 25 bucks, this one was not bad at all. This is a knife I would recommend to people. This is something that I would easily pass off to a friend and say, hey, you wanna start collecting? Here's a really good budget knife you can start with, you can use for your EDC and not have to worry about, but also gives you some higher quality stuff. Some You can feel this knife and it feels like it's a higher quality knife than a $25 knife. Coming in here, you're not dead center. You do kind of hug that show side over here a little bit, but I mean, it is fairly centered. Um, it's like a 60-40 split there. I do like the liner lock on this one versus the access lock over there or the bar lock on that one. So this one immediately kind of jumps to the top spot between the two of these over here. Uh, this one just, I mean, a lot of things about it as we can jump on it and look to. This one hugs that uh, left side here quite a bit. It's more of a 70-30 split on that. So I haven't done anything to any of these knives. Um, so they're just kind of coming in here natural as they are. We're going to place them over to the side in my order of one and two Set this Firebird to the side here, and we'll go on with the third one here. This one was the Uxtuk, 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 X-T-O-U-C, Uxtuk knife. Um, so this was a budget knife as well, D2 steel, G10 handle. This one did fall on ball bearings, and this one has a much better feel to it as well. And so I don't know if that first, oh, Comes with a nice little cleaning cloth and uh, comes in this nice little package. This one also came with a tool to take it apart too, which was kind of nice. Um, so that one give you a little bit more in that package as well. But so uh, right off the bat, you've got a little bit better profile to it. Um, beyond the Firebird, you have the G10, but you do have some uh, good texturing to the G10 here not sharp texturing so you can you can see it and you can kind of see the milled lines through there the engraving on it it's not like a full grenade pattern through and through just on the black g10 there but it does uh, give you enough that you don't have to worry about this slipping out of your hand at all this one also is on ball bearings this one also um, comes out a lot easier has some good jimping on the back here it has a little ramp for any of those back press cuts that you're going to be going through here or anything like that. And then the jimping on the front isn't a ton to where it's going to bother your hand either. So you actually get a really good ergo. No choking up because you come right on the blade there. You have a very, very small choil that's going to give you a little bit of room for uh, any sort of extra edge work you're going to put on in sharpening there, but you're definitely not going to be choking up on this knife by any means or anything like that. You do have a steel backspacer on this one, which gives you um, also a little lanyard room there, so you can put a lanyard through it. And this one is reversible, um, but you have to take the uh, scales off in order to get the clip in there. So this one you can take that off and it slides out and then you can take this off and it slides down in and then you have that little spacer there. So this one does have a reversible clip that you can put through there, just kind of hides behind the scale there. With that happening and it hiding behind the scale, you can see the actual screw, the actual screw that's holding the, the clip in is not sticking up, but the other one that's holding the, the backspacer on does stick up, which is annoying because it, kind of falls under that clip a little bit. So they recessed this one, but that one they did not, which was kind of stupid. So I don't know if that, that was just an oversight probably, but once again, a $20 knife. So these are coming, and this is actually interesting. I didn't do this on purpose, I promise, but this one now is gonna jump ahead of that one, the Firebird there for you. And last but not least, we have a Sativan knife. 
Um, so this is gonna be a sativa knife. And I saved this one for last because I thought this would probably be my favorite out of them. Sativan has been doing some really nice stuff and wow, I totally forgot this blade shape here. Yes, this is definitely my favorite for sure. This gives you a really cool, uh, like elongated sheep's foot or worn cliff look to it there. You don't have a swedge, but they've kind of notched it here. So you have like a milling um, in the blade itself. It's not I don't think it's considered a fuller, um, but there's really no edge to it. You have an actual like ledge right there that would come through. If someone knows what that's called, please let me know. Like I said, I'm still figuring some of this stuff out. I don't ever claim to have all the information or all the tem terminology down, but I do have a fascination with these wonderful tools that we get. Once again, the D2 steel, this is the Sativan ST103. And then you have these kind of jade looking G10 handles here. This one does sit on caged ball bearings, slides out really nice, liner lock. And with it being a Sativan, we've seen this with some of their other knives, has a really good detent. The way it falls down is absolutely beautiful. It's not quite completely broken in. There's not enough weight to that blade to just fall, but you can easily let that go through. It breaks really nice as you get in there and come through. The ergos on this Sativan is, are going to be fantastic. You have these little grooves to have your hand fit in there. And it, my hand doesn't fit perfectly, but it's not uncomfortable by any means. The jimping is incredibly minimal on the back here. I wish you would do a little bit more to come in, but then you'd mess with this blade profile, which is an absolutely beautiful blade profile that they put in there. There is a little bit of, I don't know if you can see those holes in there. They've got like some speed holes for weight that they added to the liner on the inside. They're not really speed holes. They're just cutouts that they put in there for weight. Um, I'm assuming weight reduction to bring it down some. It is a little bit of a heavier knife. I would I would wager to bet if we put this on a scale, you'd be close to the four ounce mark, four to five ounce mark there, because this one's gonna be a little bit heavier. Once again, this is not a ambidextrous carry. You can only carry on the one side. You don't have any clips on the other side. You do have a nice little lanyard point on the back here with that JG10 spacer in there holding that together. And if we look at these, we do have some mushrooms sticking up through there. So they're not necessarily gonna be recessed on the pocket clip, but I do like that they did this with their pocket clip. If we look at some of those other ones, that first one, see how this kind of sticks up? I hate that because it's gonna catch so many things. This one comes up, comes up and then flattens out and starts to actually kind of go down. So you're not gonna catch quite as many with the wire kind of comes up and then levels out. So you're got a little bit of protection from it. And then with this one right here, same thing kind of goes down and comes up, but there's a big space there that you're going to be missing um, as this one starts to come down. So overall, I'd probably say the Sativan is my favorite out of these four knives. I haven't actually carried all four of these knives. These are just four knives that I found with the criteria being under 30 bucks or around $25. D2 steel, which is gonna be nice because D2 steel is going to be a steel that gives you a decent hardness, a good toughness, durability, and holds a decent edge. It's not gonna be a super steel by any means, but you're not gonna pay premium price for these knives. And then a G10 handle, and the reason I went with a G10 handle is for the same reason. It's gonna last a lot more. You're not gonna to have to worry about any sort of Aluminum, you're not gonna have to worry about pieces chipping off. You're not gonna have to worry about the softness or or babying some of the micarta that you get out there as well. And you're not going to break the bank with it being a titanium handle either. So that's what I was looking for. And we found a four very nice knives on Amazon all around that $25 mark. In my book, we've got the Sativan as number one. The x Xtuke, Xtuke, Xtuke. X touch, X Tuke. I, I really don't know how to say that. X Tuke. Sativan number one, X Tuke number two, Firebird, Gonzo Firebird number three. And we're just going to forget about this Flissa knife right here because I 
don't even imagine this is going to be something that someone would want um, to have. So didn't quite make the cut after looking at it. And then these three up here all were fantastic. Now I will say being in that lower budget range, this had its uh, match made up for it because all three of these were on caged ball bearings versus this one on washers. And you can get a very nice washer knife if it's made properly. And being in that low range, I guarantee this was not the quality washer that you would expect from a nice washer knife there. So does look kind of cool. Would be a fun toy to hand off to someone who knows proper knife safety. I do not, as you've seen how I handle some of these knives and just leave blades open on the table before. But yes, that's all I've got for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and link all four of these down below so you can go ahead and take a look at them. Um, as always, those links in the comment, if they're in the affiliate link section or some of the blades from Amazon, uh, purchasing any of those does help support our channel and we love any support we get from you. But if you want to go ahead and just search from yourself, it's not going to hurt my feelings anyway. So thank you again. And until next time, TTFN.